Imagine waking up in a world where the ground is frozen solid, the air stings your lungs, and every day is a battle against nature itself. No grocery stores, no heaters, no modern tools, just you, your family, and a relentless ice age determined to break you. This was the reality for Neanderthals, our ancient cousins, who didn't just survive, but thrived in conditions that would crush most of us today. In this video, we're diving deep into their incredible story, a tale of grit, ingenuity, and humanity that'll make you rethink what it means to be human. Stick around because by the end, you'll see how their struggles mirror our own in ways you never expected. The Ice Age roughly 300,000 to 30,000 years ago wasn't just cold, it was a frozen nightmare. Glaciers stretched across Europe, Asia, and parts of the Middle East, locking the land in ice and snow. Temperatures plummeted to 30 degrees or lower, and biting winds tore through the landscape. In this brutal world, Neanderthals carved out a life. They weren't the brutish cavemen of old cartoons. They were skilled hunters, toolmakers, and even artists who left a legacy that still shapes us today. Genetic studies show that many of us carry 1-2% Neanderthal DNA, meaning their story is our story. In this script, we'll explore how Neanderthals lived, loved, and survived against impossible odds. We'll uncover their daily routines, their ingenious tools, their daring hunts, and their surprisingly complex social and spiritual lives. Along the way, I'll add my own analysis, drawing parallels to modern survival stories and reflecting on what their resilience teaches us. We'll also hear real-life examples that bring their world to life, and by the end, I'll share a powerful lesson we can all apply today. Let's step back in time and meet the Neanderthals. It's dawn and the world is cloaked in darkness. Inside a cave, a group of Neanderthals huddles around a flickering fire. The walls are etched with crude drawings, bison deer, maybe a handprint or two. These aren't just decorations. They're a way to share knowledge like an ancient storyboard for survival. The air smells of smoke and animal hides, which serve as blankets for the family sleeping nearby. Women stoke the fire, warming leftover meat from yesterday's hunt. Kids play with bits of bone or stone, mimicking their parents' tasks. Men inspect their tools, sharp flint knives, and sturdy spears, planning the day's hunt. This wasn't a solo endeavor. Survival demanded teamwork. Everyone had a role from gathering plants to protecting the group from predators. This scene feels alien, but it's not so different from how we start our days. Think about it. We wake up, check our tools, phones, laptops, and plan how to tackle our challenges. Neanderthals didn't have Wi-Fi, but their need for community and purpose was just as strong. Their caves were like our homes, a safe space to regroup before facing the world. It makes me wonder in our hyper-connected age, have we lost some of that primal sense of togetherness? Neanderthals were the MacGyvers of their time, turning rocks, wood, and bones into tools that kept them alive. Their signature achievement, Levelois tools, sharp, versatile stone blades crafted with precision. Making one was no easy feat. They'd select a flint nodule, strike it carefully to shape a core, and chip away until a perfect blade emerged. This could take hours, even days of focused work. They also crafted wooden spears, some over six feet long with fire-hardened tips. These weren't just for hunting, they doubled as digging sticks or defense against predators. Bones became needles for sewing hides into clothing, crucial for surviving the cold. The patience and skill required to make these tools blow my mind. Imagine spending days on a single knife with no guarantee it'd work. It's a reminder of how resourcefulness defined them. Today, we rely on mass-produced goods, but Neanderthals had to innovate with what nature provided. This DIY spirit resonates with modern survivalists or artisans who value craftsmanship over convenience. Take the story of Utsi the Iceman, a five 300-year-old mummy found in the Alps. While not a Neanderthal, his toolkit copper, axe, flint, dagger, and bow shows the same ingenuity. Utsi's gear was custom made for his environment, just like Neanderthal tools. It's proof that ancient humans were problem solvers, not primitives. Hunting was the backbone of Neanderthal survival. Their targets, massive creatures like mammoths, woolly rhinos, and cave bears. 
These weren't easy kills. A mammoth could weigh out up to 14 tons with tusks that could impale a hunter in seconds. Neanderthals relied on strategy, not brute force. They'd track herds for days, learning their routes. Some hunts involved ambushes, hiding in bushes, spears at the ready. Others used traps like pits lined with sharp stakes. Picture a team of hunters draped in hides hearts, pounding as they close in on a mammoth. One distracts it, dodging deadly tusks, while others strike with spears. If they succeeded, the reward was meat for weeks, hides for clothing, and bones for tools. If they failed, starvation or death loomed. This wasn't just about food, it was about courage and trust. Every hunt tested their bonds. It reminds me of modern team sports or military operations where split-second coordination is everything. Neanderthals didn't have radios yet, their teamwork was flawless. It's humbling to think how much we owe to their ability to collaborate under pressure. Consider the Inuit hunters of the Arctic, who like Neanderthals faced extreme environments. In the 19th century, Inuit communities hunted whales using only harpoons and small boats. One wrong move could capsize the boat or anger the whale, yet they succeeded through skill and unity. This mirrors Neanderthal hunts where survival hinged on collective effort. The Ice Age was relentless. Winters brought sub-zero temperatures, blizzards, and scarce resources. Neanderthals adapted like champions. Caves were their primary shelters, offering protection from wind and predators. No cave nearby, they built huts from branches, hides, and even snow like early igloos. Clothing was another lifesaver. They wore layered hides, fur outward, stitched with bone needles and sinew thread. This wasn't fashion, it was armor against frostbite. They also mastered fire, not just for warmth, but for cooking, which made food easier to digest and store. Their adaptability is a masterclass in resilience. They didn't complain about the cold they innovated. It's a stark contrast to our reliance on modern conveniences. When my power went out during a winter storm last year, I was miserable for a day. Neanderthals endured decades of that no backup generator in sight. It makes me appreciate their grit and question how soft we've become. Look at the Bedouin tribes of the Middle East. For centuries, they've thrived in harsh deserts by building portable tents and using camel hair for clothing. Like Neanderthals, they turned their environment's challenges into opportunities. It's a testament to human ingenuity across time. Neanderthals weren't lone wolves. They lived in tight-knit groups of 10, 20 people, including families and elders. They cared for the vulnerable as shown by skeletons of elderly Neanderthals with healed injuries. Communication was basic grunts, gestures, maybe proto-words, but effective enough to coordinate hunts and share warnings. Their social bonds were their strength. Imagine a group gathered around a fire sharing stories through drawings or sounds. Kids learned by watching, not in classrooms. This community spirit kept them alive. This hits home. In our individualistic world, we often forget the power of community. Neanderthals survived because they had each other's backs. It's a lesson for us, whether it's helping a neighbor or supporting a friend, those connections make us stronger. Their care for the elderly also challenges the survival of the fittest stereotype. They valued every member, not just the strongest. In 2018, archaeologists found a Neanderthal skeleton in Iraq's Shanidar cave, dubbed Shanidar Z. This individual, likely elderly, had severe disabilities, yet lived a long life suggesting care from the group. It's a moving example of compassion, like modern communities rallying to support someone with special needs. Neanderthals weren't just survivors. They had a creative and spiritual side. They buried their dead with care sometimes, with flowers hinting at beliefs in an afterlife. Cave art like the red handprints in Spain's El Castillo cave shows their urge to create. They also made jewelry from shells and teeth, possibly as status symbols or amulets. This is where Neanderthals feel truly human. Art and rituals aren't practical. They're expressions of meaning. Their burials suggest they grieved, hoped, maybe even prayed. It's a reminder that even in hardship, humans seek purpose. Today we express this through music writing or faith, but the impulse is the same. The sand people of Southern Africa, one of the oldest continuous cultures create rock art, that echoes Neanderthal drawings. 
Their paintings, often tied to spiritual rituals, show animals and hunters much like Neanderthal cave art. It's a bridge between ancient and modern creativity. Neanderthals were wanderers moving with the seasons or as glaciers shifted. These migrations were perilous crossing icy rivers or rugged mountains tested their endurance. Yet movement brought benefits. Groups traded tools, shared hunting tips, or exchanged resources, fostering innovation. Their nomadic life feels like a metaphor for adaptability. They didn't cling to one place, they evolved with their world. It's a contrast to our rooted lives where change can feel scary. Neanderthals teach us to embrace uncertainty, whether it's a new job or a big move. The Mongols of the 13th century were nomads like Neanderthals moving across vast steppes with their herds. Their mobility made them unbeatable, much like Neanderthal migrations spread knowledge. It shows how movement drives progress. Neanderthals didn't live alone. Around 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens arrived in Europe. Sometimes they traded or shared resources, other times they clashed. Genetic evidence proves interbreeding modern humans carry Neanderthal genes, especially in immune system traits. This interaction is a microcosm of human history, cooperation and conflict side by side. It's easy to romanticize Neanderthals, but they fought for survival, just like sapiens. Their interbreeding shows we're more connected than we think. It's a humbling reminder to bridge divides in our own time. We often think of Neanderthals as a closed chapter, an evolutionary dead end buried beneath ice and time. But the truth is far more complex and deeply human. They weren't mindless brutes battling mammoths for scraps. They were people. They mourned their dead. They crafted tools with elegance and purpose. They created art in places where the wind howled through caves, leaving red handprints on stone, not just as marks, but as messages I was here. I lived. I mattered. They cared for the elderly. They protected the weak. In the harshest conditions imaginable, they did something miraculous. They held each other close. Their legacy isn't lost. It lives in our blood, literally. Many of us carry ne Neanderthal DNA in our immune systems, our skin, even our brains. Their story didn't vanish. It fused with ours. And perhaps that's the most humbling truth. They didn't disappear. They became part of us. Their existence teaches us that survival isn't just about strength or intelligence. It's about empathy, adaptability, and connection. In a time where division seems easier than unity, remembering how two ancient humans, different species, shared food warmth and even love, reminds us what we're capable of. They cross glacial valleys with nothing but courage and each other. Can we cross the divides we face now with all the tools they never had? The Neanderthals may be gone, but their breath still lingers in ours. Their fire still glows in our shared humanity.